seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This video is sponsored by Bambu Lab. According to the earliest days of recorded human history back in 2004, the Coca-Cola and Mentos have been a big part of our evolution. But the fact is, it's completely meaningless. It's just for fun and collecting views on YouTube. There are some attempts where someone have tried to build drag racer or rocket. Like, it's a bit better. At least something. So in this video we are going to produce electricity by using Coca-Cola and Mentos as a fuel. Before we even start doing something, let's be clear. This video is not fake. I'm going to show you everything. Design, build, testing, fails and so on. This is not another free energy video. And actually there is not even real reason to think so. All I'm going to do is to build little hydro power station. But instead of using high velocity water, I'm going to use Coca-Cola and Mentos. Sounds simple, but there is actually multiple complications if you want to use those two components. So how I am exactly going to do that? Following animation explain this all. When we insert the Mentos into the bottle of Coca-Cola, we all know what happens. The Coca-Cola expands and shoots out from the bottle like a volcano. We are going to capture this expanded Coca-Cola and direct this to the hydro turbine, which is connected to the generator and by that we produce electricity. The most complicated area in this whole project is this thing over here. There will be some type of device that directs the flow of the Coca-Cola to the tube and also feeds the Mentos to the bottle. This was the most problematic area in this video, but we we'll speak about this a bit later when we finally arrive there. To get this project started somehow, I fired up my brand new Bambu Lab A1 and printed two buckets with two different printing directions for the belt on the turbine. I did this to figure out the best way to print the rest of them. And it's pretty clear which one turned out better. So the printing direction is now confirmed. I'm going to print all 23 buckets upright. Before I did this, I just wanted to see how much better it would turn out if I use special Bambu Lab support material and keep them laying flat. Yes, it's better, but still it uses more material and increases the printing time massively. Because it would have to change filament every layer. So still, the buckets will be printed upright and this is exactly what I did next. I'm going to print all 23 buckets at the same time. Because the surface that keeps the print connected to the boil plate is so small, I used Prime for the rest of the prints. By the way, I was limit testing the Bambu Lab textured PA print pad. And I didn't use any glue stick or any adhesive at all and not even single one of them failed. The whole print turned out excellent and every single bucket is just perfect. The belt on turbine wheel where the buckets will be attached to, I printed also with Bambu Lab A1, but this time I had to use supports because of the shape of the model. I use special filament from Bambu Lab for supporting PLA prints. It increases the printing time and there is a bit wasted filament, but the end result paid off. The support material was just so easy to remove and the surface what was supported looks just so good. My first prints with A1, 10 out of 10, absolutely excellent. So now the major parts for the belt and turbine are printed and we can assemble it together. 90% of the assembly is just attaching the buckets to the wheel, with M4 bolts and lock nuts. It's extremely simple thing to do, but it's a bit time consuming. For me, it was actually complete pain. I just cannot do exactly same thing for too long. I just get turbo bored. To get all those buckets to the wheel, I think it took me around 20 minutes in total. And there were no issues. After that, I press fitted bearings to the bearings holders. Kinda press fitted. Then I attach them to the towers that holds the turbine up. And then I attach them to the wood plate with the turbine. Now I have finished the turbine section and it spins extremely smoothly. Right now I am not sure the perfect location for the nozzle, so I did some figuring out with my pressure washer. I just shoot the stream of the water to the bucket with a different angle and heights to get any idea where the nozzle exactly should be located. I can say I did get some information. So I run another test with actual nozzle mounted to the optimal location. For now I use just water to see how the nozzle and the location of the nozzle works. In my opinion, it's fine. 
I'm going to use 6.5 mm nozzle. At the beginning, I had idea to use one mm 3D printer nozzle, but I think it's a bit too small for optimal performance and it's a bit unsafe. When the Coca-Cola and Mentos reaction starts in the bottle, it happens extremely fast and lot of pressure pulls up and cannot be discharged through the one mm nozzle fast enough. There's high chance that the bottle will explode. So I'm going to use 6.5 mm nozzle for now. If it doesn't work, doesn't perform enough, then we will figure something out. But the belt on turbine is ready, so the next big step in this project is Coca-Cola and Mentos section. This part took most of my brain cells in this project. I had to figure out how to feed Mentos to Coca-Cola, how to direct the pressure aka expand the Coca-Cola to the nozzle, and at the same time the system cannot have any leaks or holes, otherwise the expanded Coca-Cola can escape. So the system I'm going to build have two rules. First, the Mentos have to be already in the device. I just gonna throw this into the bottle and then close the opening. Because the reaction is so fast, I literally don't have time for this. Second, Coca-Cola cannot leave the bottle. This is not so obvious for most of the people, but it's extremely important. If you pour the Coca-Cola into the glass, you see what happens. In our case, Coca-Cola loses the potential energy and the reaction is way weaker or doesn't happen at all. It's because when you open the bottle or pour this into the glass, the pressure is released and the carbon dioxide begins to escape. Carbon dioxide is critical component for this reaction and we don't want to lose any of it. There are a lot of videos on YouTube where people try to do some innovative things with it and fail hard. So Coca-Cola cannot leave the bottle. After this introduction, the final thing that works look like this. I mean, this is extremely simple and believe me, it took me a while to finally come up with this final design. It works with the magnets. I will glue the individual Mentos candies together to get the rod like this. At the top, I glued one square nut. Then I put them inside the tube and the magnet outside of the cylinder will hold them steady. When I remove the magnet, the Mentos will fall into bottle. All of this is printed with Bambulab A1 and for material, I used high speed PTG. First of all, PTG is an excellent material for this application, but PTG is not the best material for high speed printers. That's why the PTG popularity is kind of falling. But Pambulab has solved this issue with their new product, high speed PTG which you can print as fast as PLA with high speed printers like A1. I'm really happy that they have this type of new product because I haven't used PTG for a while, because I'm only using high speed printers. Now this brings the PTG back to my filament options. Also these things that feeds the Mentos in the bottle is printed with this exact same filament, with high speed and it turned out absolutely excellent. Now when we have a thing, there is, let's say, little assembly required. First of all, this will screw on the bottle like a gap. I tried to design threads and did some test prints with FTM and resin printers, but I just didn't succeed. They were leaking badly. So I came up with a bit easier solution. I just cut the hole to already existing bottle gap. Glue this to my Mentos feed device and I have my threads. It fits on the bottle perfectly and also seals it. We also have to attach the tube, but first I just have to see will it even work. So here is my first Coca-Cola Mentos run ever. Okay, it didn't go exactly as planned. The Mentos didn't wanna fall in the bottle. It did come loose, but it didn't pass the gap. After a bit shaking, it did pass and then I was not ready for it and it fell over. So I had to fix the problem with the gap. I just cut the opening a little bit bigger and now it works. It works better. So now, at least I hope so, we are ready to produce some electricity with my setup. For that, I also attached one small stepper motor to the system. This is what converts the rotational movement of the turbine to an actual electricity. Obviously, we are not going to produce some insane amount of power. So the stepper motor is pretty small, but optional for this application. It should be enough to turn this small LED bulb on. So if the LED bulb turns on, then we have produced electricity with Coca-Cola and Mentos. So enough speaking and let's see, will this even work? Well, the first test was success for sure. To be honest, I was thinking there are some things that need to be adjusted, but everything worked as well as I can hope for. And what is most important, the light bulb turned on, which means we did produce electricity using Coca-Cola and Mentos. But we didn't do all this hard work for only one test run, so let's do it again. I 
believe a lot of you wondering how much electricity we did produce with this setup. First of all, I don't have equipment to measure so low amount of electricity. But I can say this from the head without any measurements and calculations. It's really less. We managed to barely turn on 5 volt LED light for around 3 to 4 seconds. There is nothing to really measure. And to be clear, I'm not trying to claim that I find new way to power the whole world. Absolutely not. First of all, producing electricity this way is not stable and it's extremely, extremely expensive. For one run I used one pack of Mentos which cost 89 cents and 1.5 liter Coca Cola which cost 1.69 euros, aka dollars, they are pretty much same value right now. So turning on 5 volt LED light for around 3 to 4 seconds, it cost me 2.58 euros, not really sustainable. I just wanna show you what if we used water instead of Coca Cola. Now it looks like a hydro turbine. If this was the worst possible way to produce electricity that you have ever seen in your life, leave a like. But okay, seriously, Coca-Cola and Mentos, this is just for fun. This reaction is absolutely useless and doesn't have any application in real world. Even though what we did in this video, at least in my opinion, it was a little bit more, how to say, meaningful than other Coca-Cola Mentos nonsense on YouTube. Half of them are even fake, by the way. Also, big thanks to Bambu Lab for sending me their absolutely excellent 3D printer A1. This was pleasure to make this video with this printer. So guys, thank you for watching and if you did like this video, maybe consider watching this more 20 times for your YouTube algorithm. Again, big thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.